levels. If you have ever edited a photograph in any computer software that was designed to edit images, then you have probably already encountered a levels tool, a levels module of some description. Almost every piece of image editing software has one. Darktable is, of course, no exception, and in this video, we'll look into how it works. Hi, and welcome to episode 32 of Understanding Darktable. If you can hear the rain outside, my apologies. It is absolutely bucketing down here right now. Okay, levels. Like I said in the intro, almost every image editing piece of software has a levels tool of some description. And for this particular video, I've chosen four images to work with. And the first one is this fairly highly saturated sunset image from a road trip about eight years ago. Uh, this was taken in Streaky Bay in South Australia. As you can see beyond the base curve, all I've done is a crop. And that was because of the uh, filter bracket that was visible on the edges of the frame and it was shot on a 20 mil wide angle lens and I've done a retouch because there was some dirt on the sensor. Okay, so we'll jump over to the levels module and first up we've got two modes, a manual mode and an automatic mode. Now what a levels module is designed to do is to set the black point and the white point for an image to their maximum value so that theoretically the histogram won't clip it'll set the black point at the you know left hand extremity of the you know dark tones set the white point at the right hand extremity of the white tones and then set the gray point at the average value in between that black point and that white point. So the automatic mode will do exactly that. It will set the black point and the white point and then adjust the gray point accordingly. So we'll click on automatic and our histogram has disappeared and we're left with three sliders, black, gray and white set at 0%, 50% and 100% respectively. And because I've got the clipping indicator turned on, we can see that Darktable has severely clipped the white point. But because it's set the white slider to 100%, and that's the maximum value, we can't undo it. We can make it worse, but we can't go back because it's already set this white point and given us a maximum value of 100%. So that's a little bit mm, quirky, shall we say? Let's just try the other three images and see what happens. This image was from a road trip I did with my son Max about 10 years ago. Again, we'll just go automatic. Again, we've got clipping of the white point. This is bizarre. These last two images were from a studio shoot I did a couple of years ago. The theme was Bonnie and Clyde. And as we can see, this is quite underexposed, probably by about two stops, if I'm honest. So we'll go automatic. And in this particular instance, the module hasn't clipped the white point. We'll go with our final image. This one was better exposed. It was probably a third of a stop, or maybe a half of a stop under. Let's go automatic mode. And again, we've got clipping of the white point. So my immediate suggestion is to say, maybe steer clear of the automatic mode in the levels module because it tends to be a little heavy handed. We'll jump back to our first image. We'll click on reset and we end up back in manual mode, which brings back our histogram and our three white lines here, which are what are used to denote the black point, the gray point, and the white point for our image. Now immediately below that histogram you'll see that there is a button labeled auto and then there is a black point, gray point, and white point eyedropper. Now the auto mode will do the same thing as what the automatic mode did but it will leave us with the ability to manually tweak those settings after the fact. 
So it's a good one click option to at least get you started with setting a black point and a white point. So we'll click on auto. Again, we've got clipping of the white point, but at least now we can grab that slider and drag it back to the right and we can watch both our histogram as well as our clipping indicator for an indication of when we are no longer clipping the white point. Now, do I need to go until all of the clipping indicator has disappeared? Maybe, maybe not. I think it comes down to personal preference a little bit. If I was to bring that back in so that there was a little bit more clipping according to the clipping indicator, I mean, I can turn that off and to me that still looks okay. If you're a purist, you might want to abide entirely by the rules. I'm probably happy with that particular white point. Now, the gray point, like I said, is automatically calculated by Darktable to be the average of where the black point is set and where the white point is set. It calculates all of the values in between and then adds them up and then divides by the number of values that there are. Now, I don't want to derail this discussion with a discussion of advanced mathematics. That's not my scene. And I don't know enough about the way Darktable does its mathematical calculations in the background. But essentially, it's adding up all of those values and then dividing by the number of values in the data set to come up with the gray point. Once that has been calculated, if you move either the white point or the black point slider, then Darktable will recalculate the gray point for you. So if I move that white point, we can see that the gray point is being recalculated. The same thing happens with the black point. As I move that, the gray point gets recalculated. Now, if I've messed all this up, I can always go back, click the auto button, and we're back to where Darktable thinks we should be. But as we can see, that white point has been clipped on the histogram, and if I turn on the clipping indicator, we can see that it's clipped as well. And I could then simply drag that white point back to somewhere that I thought was more acceptable and go, yeah, that's okay. All right, let's move on to the second image and we'll look at how these eyedroppers work. Okay, so we'll turn the module on. We're in manual mode. We'll click on the auto button, let Darktable do its thing. As we saw, it moved the black point in, it moved the white point in, and if we turn on our clipping indicator, there is a tiny amount of clipping of the blacks. If we zoom in on Max's jumper here, we can see there's a little bit of clipping in the blacks, but to me, that's acceptable. And there's a fair amount of clipping in the sky as well. Now, if I drag the white point right out to the right-hand extremity of the histogram, I can now click on the white eyedropper and then choose a white point from my image, which for me would be the, this little bit of cloud here, which is where there's the most light shining on the cloud. So I click on that, and dark tables change the white point on me. This I don't understand. How am I now supposed to go and point to that white pixel when it's been obliterated? Even if I turn off the clipping indicator, how am I going to find that point? I can click and drag, and it does update in real time, and I can then go, okay, well, it's kind of in there somewhere. But I do find that an odd behavior. I would expect that when I choose one of these eyedroppers, that no changes should occur until I have actually clicked in the image to say, this is where I want my white point, or this is where I want my black point to be. But for some reason, it just goes ahead and, I don't know if that's a glitch, but it's rather odd. However, we can at least drag this around and get real-time feedback, but 
to me, it does seem to be a little heavy handed again. I mean, look where it's set the black point. It's way inside the histogram. The white point is inside the histogram. Uh, so my tendency would be just go full manual, you know, drag these points manually. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm not really a fan of the module. I, I don't think it gives you accurate enough feedback. It's not like other modules where you've got that wag the dog thing that you can right click on and get the little waggy tail and then you can then type in values and hit enter and get an exact value happening. When I think back to my days with Photoshop, the levels control in Photoshop would at least allow you text input for the black point, the gray point, and the white point. So, you know, you could actually type in an exact value for the black point, for the white point, for the gray point. This module doesn't allow you to do that. So let's just move on. We'll come back to this image here. Again, I'll hit reset. My natural inclination would be to simply drag the white point in make sure my clipping indicator is turned on and then I can see when clipping is occurring and then I can just simply drag back to the right a little bit till that clipping indicator disappears and that to me would be my starting point if I was going to use the levels module. Last image we'll do the same thing we'll reset the tool and I will just bring this in. I'll see some clipping. Move back out to the right. And I might just zoom in on Matthew's face here. I can still see a little bit of the red clipping indicator on his nose and on his ear there. To me, I could probably come in a little bit further like so. Turn that off. Yeah, I mean, to me, that looks fine. And... That would be my starting point and then whatever other processing I was going to do, I would do from there. Now, if you've been watching this series of videos, you probably know what I'm about to say. I think there are other tools in Darktable that do a better job, namely Tone Curve and the Filmic module. But if you want a simple one-click approach to set your black point and your white point, you could certainly use the auto button, but like I said, turn on that clipping indicator and just be aware of what the levels module is doing because it may be that it's clipping more than you're comfortable with. I should also mention that the manual for Darktable does mention that these eyedroppers reference what you've got set in the color picker over here on the left hand side. Now, I haven't done a video on the color picker yet, and maybe I should have. Just quickly, let's run through it. You've got the choice of either selecting a single point in the image, in other words, a single pixel, or you can set by an area. And to set with an area, you simply click on the eyedropper and you can then click and drag to cover a range of pixels. So if you weren't entirely sure of where your black point should be, you could drag across a range of pixels and go, this whole selected area represents what I consider to be black. And you can then choose, do I want the minimum value that falls within that area, the maximum value that falls within that area, or just the mean of that particular area. In other words, of all those blacks and dark greys, take the average and make that my black point. I can then choose whether I want to be in RGB or lab mode, and I should mention that the levels module does work in lab, lightness and A channel and B channel it doesn't work in RGB. Uh, you can also add any of these settings to the live samples section of the color picker module simply by clicking add. So I might say, well, that's what I consider to be my black point. 
If I now want to set my white point, I could come over to here and go, I want to make that my white point, click on add. But I've added these in RGB. That was probably a little bit silly, so I'll click on remove. I'll go back to setting my black area and I'll add that in lab. And then I'll set my white point off his shirt here. Click on add. So I've now saved my black point and my white point in the lab color space to the color picker. And I can check the box that says display sample areas on image to see where I took those samples from. So that's just a quick take on the levels module. Like I said, not really a fan myself. I can't imagine I would ever use it. And again, I just think that the tone curve module and the filmic module give you much greater control in terms of being able to enter exact values anyway. I find that it's a little bit tricky to try and drag these points to exactly where you want them within your image. Your mileage may vary. Okay, that just about does it. As for other things to cover in this particular episode, there was one comment that came up on YouTube through the week from Demarest K, uh, who said, Hi Bruce, interesting series of videos. I've been using Lightroom since version 2 and don't like the way Adobe is going with their pricing policy. Here, here. I'm using Lightroom 6.14 Perpetual License, but I'm investigating alternatives. Darktable has been high on my list, but it's only thanks to your videos that I got started with it. Thanks a lot for these very useful videos. You're welcome. I'd love to see a full edit from start to end of a photo shoot, including all steps. How do you select and rate your images? What post-processing steps? i.e. modules, do you use? What export settings do you use? Etc. Etc. Keep up the good work. Well, I shall definitely add that to the list of forthcoming topics. Okay, I think that will do it for this episode. See you in the next one.